We are just going to give it a second and allow everyone to come in from the waiting room. Please make sure you're muted as you enter. Page 32. And it goes through in those pages. I'll give it another second. All right. Good afternoon. This is a hearing before the Boston Cannabis Board, the BCB. Today is February 8th, 2023. Today's hearing is being conducted pursuant to certain temporary amendments to the open meeting law. This is what allows us to meet virtually. This hearing is being recorded and will be posted to the City of Boston website. Before I review some procedural matters, I will introduce Chairwoman Kathleen Joyce. Thank you, Jasmine. My name is Kathleen Joyce. I'm chair of the Boston Cannabis Board. And today I am also joined by Commissioner Lisa Holmes, Commissioner John Smith, and Commissioner Darlene Lombos. There you are. Thank you. Thank you, Chairwoman Joyce. My name is Jasmine Wynn, and I am the Boston Cannabis Board Manager. We are also joined by Allison Quinn, who is the project manager for the BCB. I will begin by reading each item into the record as they appear on the agenda. I will then ask who is present on behalf of the proposal before us. Each applicant will have 10 minutes each to present to the BCB, followed by questions from the board members. We will then take public testimony, beginning with elected officials or their representatives, followed by the general public. If you wish to testify, please use the link that will be put in the chat. If you have done so already, you do not have to re-sign up. Please wait until the matter in which you would like to be called is, please wait until the matter in which you would like to speak about is called. Do not use the chat function to give testimony. It will not be considered. Please state your full name, address, and affiliation, if any. Testimony will be limited to two minutes, at which time you will be muted. Um, just a quick housekeeping matter. Our voting agenda will actually take place next Thursday, February 16th at 1 p.m. instead of next Wednesday, February 15th. So again, the voting will take place next Thursday, February 16th at 1 p.m. instead of Wednesday. And that will be posted to the City of Boston's website as well. Um, additional testimony may be submitted in writing to cannabisboard.boston.gov. The record will be kept open until Wednesday, February 15th at 5 p.m. The BCB does not give any more weight to spoken testimony than it does to written testimony. We will begin with the first item. The applicant is JTJD LLC, DBA Ember Gardens. The proposed license permit is 610 Chelsea Street, East Boston. The license type is a marijuana delivery operator license. The proposed hours of operations are 7 a.m. to 10 p.m., seven days a week. This is an equity applicant. The date of the initial application was August 17, 2022. The filing with inspectional services was September 13, 2022. And the community meeting was November 22nd, 2022. There was a buffer zone conflict with another cannabis establishment. Before we begin with the presentation, I will ask Shakia Scott, who is the cannabis business manager, to speak about the equity certification. Thank you, Jasmine. Good afternoon, everyone. Our office was able to certify JTJD LLC DBA Ember Gardens as an equity applicant through the documentation submitted by the applicant. Joseph Hoffman is the social partner and 51 beneficial interest holder of JTJD LLC DBA Ember Gardens, meeting the 51% ownership interest threshold set forth in the ordinance. Mr. Hoffman also meets the following criteria a person who is the child of a person with a past arrest or conviction for the possession, sale, manufacturing, or cultivation of marijuana between 1971 and 2016, who is also or has also been a resident of Boston for the past five years. Mr. Mitchell. Again, can everyone make sure they're muted? Unless you're presenting. Sorry, she can't go ahead. No problem. Mr. Hoffman provided documentation proving his parent was arrested and charged with possession to distribute a Class D substance over several years between 1971 and 2016. This documentation also included his birth certificate proving kinship. To prove residency, Mr. Hoffman submitted several documents, which I'll also talk about in the next eligibility criteria. Mr. Hoffman also qualified under a person who has resided in the city of Boston for the past seven years. 
He provided a copy of his driver's license, his Boston Public School transcripts and diploma, bank statements, pay stubs, and correspondence from his employer, establishing that he has been a resident of Boston for the past seven years. He also meets uh, the eligibility criteria of a person whose annual household income is at or below 100% of the area median, median income. Mr. Hoffman submitted his 2021 federal income tax return, which reported a taxable income below 100% AMI of Boston. Are there any other or additional questions about this certification? Oh. Yeah, none. Thank you, Shakia. Um, who is pricing on behalf of the licensee? Good afternoon, Madam Chair, Ms. Wynn, Ms. Quinn, and members of the board. Leslie Delaney Hawkins with the law firm of Prince of Valentine. On behalf of the applicant, JD, J, JTJD LLC, doing business as Ember Gardens. With me today is Joseph Hoffman, Joseph Lavoy, and Shane Hyde. As Ms. As Ms. Wynn. Leslie, I think you froze. She is frozen. Start. Is there anyone else from that team that would like to? Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm present here. Shane Hyde to my left is Joe Lavoy. To my right is Joseph Hoffman. Um, you know, we have yeah. our presentation ready. You know, if Leslie is able to join back in, great. Um, but ready to proceed and we can talk about our um, proposed business in East Boston um, and field any questions from the board. Okay. Are you going to give the presentation or Attorney Hawkins was going to present? I, I have it ready. If I can okay. If you want to proceed until she, she's probably going to sign off and sign back on. Okay. All right. Uh, everyone see it good? Okay. Uh, I know that's a timed presentation, so just sort of let me know when you want me to start. Sorry, you can begin. <laughs> Okay, great. Um, so our company, legal name JT, JD LLC, uh, but doing business as Ember Gardens. Um, we're going uh, applying today for a, a delivery operator license um, in East Boston. Uh, first, a bit about Ember Gardens in general. Um, it's a company that is trying to open uh, several different licenses across the state. All the founders being Massachusetts natives, including the two gentlemen to my right and left. Um, we have other partners that are in the social equity uh, program at the state level. Um, and, you know, in terms of uh, our focus here, we want to kind of deliver high quality cannabis products uh, you know, from our location in East Boston to the Boston community and some surrounding municipalities. Uh, the core team for this project here um, is Joseph Hoffman, uh, you know, born and raised in Brighton, Massachusetts. Um, the equity applicant, he knows both myself um, through um, his brother, who was my college roommate, as well as Joe Lavoy here as their fathers were working together for decades. Um, Joe Lavoy to the left here, he has background along with his partner, Tiago D'Souza, who's listed um, in logistics. Um, as seen here, they, they run a large business already out of East Boston. It's actually in the building and we're in now at 580 Chelsea Street. Um, with uh, approximately 40 vans um, uh, giving uh, services for Amazon. Between Joe and Tiago, we have a, a, a big you know, um, advantage in terms of the depth, um, depth of knowledge for knowing the logistical side of the business. And then that combined with uh, myself and Dan Gillen, uh, who are you know been in the regulated industry for cannabis here in Massachusetts for years now. Dan from the operational side, mine from the business management side. Um, so kind of marrying those two expertise together, um, we're very confident in our business plan and be able to execute uh, this delivery uh, business in, in East Boston. And then finally to mention uh, Aaron Washington, he's Ember Gardens uh, head of security, a retired state police officer. He's also been working with us for years now in terms of you know, uh, giving security plans, making sure our plan is up to date um, to meet all regulations, both at the municipal and state level as well as um, you know, be, he will help us uh, make sure that we have the proper SOPs and, and everything else, which I'll touch on later on in this presentation. In terms of the operational approach here in East Boston, um, you know, we, it, this license type as the board is well aware of, I know we're not the first to come 
to the board with this license type. It basically allows us a sort of warehouse where we're able to wholesale, um, store, and then uh, deliver out products um, to compliant areas. Um, for our hours of operation, as mentioned, beginning will be from 7 to 10 p.m. The state mandated window is 8 to 9, um, so only deliveries will take place in, in that window. Uh, when we started with three, uh, we expect, um, you know, CCC compliantly inspected vehicles for the deliveries. Um, you know, as the board knows, you know, it has deliveries can only occur in municipalities that don't have banned and retail sales. It has to be, you know, not including certain uh, locations like college, university, dormity, uh, dormitories, you know, federal, uh, federal public housing and so, so on. And our delivery software will adequately determine, you know, which addresses are permitted and not permitted. And with Joe and Tiago's experience of using this technology already for their Amazon business, um, this will be a, a pretty seamless plug and play for us. Um, and then, you know, just another thing, you know, obviously there's only one delivery per day for cost per consumer and not an excess of one ounce of cannabis. Our location in East Boston um, is, is in an area that's very industrial. You know, there's no residential abutters or, or even really that it's any been close walking distance. Um, you know, uh, we are close to two other, um, it's right at the precipice of a half mile. So, you know, we submitted a buffer statement on the half mile, but we will, um, follow up with uh, an engineering firm to see if we are exactly within that half mile, uh, buffer, um, moving forward. But, you know, we're, we're acting as today. We, if we are within that half mile buffer, um, but, and then, you know, regardless of the measure applied, we're also far away from any schools as well. Um, again, in, in a pretty industrial area. Here is uh, a picture of the building and, and the floor plan. Um, you can see it's right next to that bridge heading over into Chelsea. Um, the size of the building is about 2,500 square feet. It has about 12 parking spots available. Um, there's also multiple parking lots across the street um, for any overflow parking uh, for employees. Again, we start with, we're, you know, anticipating three trucks at this location. Um, and so we, you know, we have plenty of parking for those as well as employees, especially with the additional overflow. Um, the uh, quick floor plan here, again, it's nothing revolutionary. There's a, a second floor where there'll be an office. The first floor will have a vault as well as sort of the area where the trucks will back up to and, and where deliveries, you know, where we fill the, the trucks with the canvas products. As per CCC regulations, all of that will be taken, uh, will be happening, you know, beyond public view. The public won't be able to see any of that happening and it will happen in a secure area um, as I'll touch on in a second when we go through security. So for security, um, you know, again, headed by our chief of security, Aaron Washington, you know, every, all the management team there will be thoroughly trained along with our employees on all sort of SOPs, everything from uh, processing visitor IDs um, you know, to, to prevent any underage visitors, um, to monitoring camera feeds for any security incidents. Um, there'll be, you know, top of the line cameras and alarms and all up to CCC regulations. The storage would be in a highly secure vault within that building. Um, and then, you know, in terms of any product drop-offs, like filling the delivery vans, um, will take place in an area, um, you know, it's away from public view, um, and somewhere that is secure. Um, the same will then happen to cash pickups as well. And we do have a partner bank, GFA, where, where all this cash will ultimately end up. For the driver security, again, you know, this is everything that's required by the state here. You know, there will be a body camera. Um, there will be make sure there's uh, GPS tracking all the vehicles. You know, any sort of uh, issues um, will have to be reported to the CCC and local law enforcement immediately. Um, there's a whole process in terms of identifying those that any cannabis is delivering from regarding the ID. All those uh, procedures would be um, taught thoroughly um, and, and maintained for all the, our drivers and, and delivery drivers. Um, things like viewing the valid government ID at the time of sale, you know, that it matches to the proof of order and receiving the signature from the person who actually ordered the cannabis products. For the vehicles themselves, like I mentioned, you know, there's a whole list of CCC regulations that are required for these vehicles. You know, it includes an exterior alarm, you know, a locked storage container where the cannabis uh, is located, you know, outside of view from anyone sort of looking into the vehicle. 
Um, you need uh, uh, some sort of communication between, you know, home base, so to speak, the, the people um, uh, directing all the delivery drivers and, and while they're on the road to make sure uh, there's always constant communication between the two. Uh, like I said, it includes a GPS time that, you know, will have to give us the locations not exceeding 30 minutes. And then a multitude of cameras on the vehicles as well, the front, the back, and you know where the actual product will be stored. Uh, firearms are strictly prohibited, and there'll be you know no advertising, you know, per zero like regulations uh, on the vehicles themselves. For the prevention of diversion, um, you know, for from the facility side, you know, there'll be no customers here, um, so it'll be just vendors. Uh, and visitors, those will always be identified uh, properly, um, you know, using scanners as well, um, you know, make sure everyone is, is over 21 and the, the people who work at the location facility will have the training to, you know, identify and properly check this identification. Um, for the, the drivers on the road, like I mentioned before, they, they have to check the ID at the time. They will also utilize the most uh, up-to-date scanners to assist them to making sure it's a valid ID. Um, and they will also be trained on, on the proper techniques to identify uh, and properly identify all uh, valid IDs that, that a customer can present. Um, for the projected staff here, we see uh, about 20 to 25 full and part-time staff with the majority being full-time. We see now that most of these jobs from Joe here are, you know, based on his logistics experience uh, for his company that works with Amazon, that it's mostly all full-time employees. Um, Part-time would really only be for staff that is either for overflow or if there for some reason is an individual who wants to work for us who cannot, you know, uh, meet a full-time schedule. Um, in terms of types of employees, there'll be, you know, a general man, a general assistant manager, the inventory associates that help load the trucks and, you know, help with the dispatch uh, duties. And then the drivers themselves, as I'm sure the board is aware, there will be you know, two individuals per vehicle. For our projected wages, the entry levels uh, you know, would be between 18 to 21 plus an hour based on experience. Again, we have a, a good line in what the, 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 the demand for drivers is right now from Joe uh, on his delivery business. And we're seeing it's, it's definitely towards more towards 21 plus in order to get a good driver and be able to retain that worker. Um, the managers will have a 60 to 90 K salary also based on experience in terms of benefits. The full-time employees will have access to the health insurance plan, paid maternity, paid maternity and paternity leave and a 401k program with company matching. Oh, Shane, that is your time. If you want to wrap up. Uh, quicker. Yeah. So we have uh, laid out as well, um, you know, our hiring goal, 50% for city of Boston, uh, diversity hiring goal, plan for hiring individuals with criminal records. Our labor peace position is, you know, we're willing to negotiate in good faith, also include a, uh, a hotline. Uh, we've been working with this nonprofit, One Bead, already have started working. Uh, we'll give financial as well as actual um, time to give to the students and help those in the city of Boston. Um, here's the first event that Joe and Tiago were able to attend with um, some students um, in terms of helping them get into entrepreneurship and uh, starting business for themselves. And then the positive impact plan is the one we've used on all our locations across the state, scholarship funding and interns, getting those from those disproportionate impact areas into the industry um, and you know, giving them actually hands-on experience. These will be paid as well um, and you know, scholarship to get business of their, you know, business course of their choice or some cannabis seminar to help them get into the industry. And then, you know, finally, you know, we'll always, like at all our locations, we'll always be open to continuous feedback from any of our uh, community butters, neighbors, or anyone in terms of how we're conducting ourselves as a business to make sure that we're a good neighbor and a good business that will, you know, fit into the East Boston neighborhood. Uh, sorry for running over, but uh, thank okay. you for you know, any questions from the board. Thank you. Uh, we will move to questions and comments from the board members, starting with Chairwoman Joyce. Thanks, Jasmine. Um, thanks for your presentation. It's nice to see you before us again today. Um, I was just wanted to get an update from your team on the status of your other licenses that have been approved by the board. I know they were disclosed um, yeah, to us, but to Jay's on or not? <laughs> Probably not. Um, can everyone? Uh, make yes. Yes. Nope. I think Cassidy is not. What's the thing? 
Sorry. Jim, you just want to provide the board a brief update on where you stand on Newberry Street. Oh, uh, yeah, we're currently working, still current, working through that process. Um, so uh, at this point, we're doing an uh, appeal with the CBA. So um, we are still okay. working. Um, you know, at this point, it's not on the precipice of uh, under construction or anything like that. So, uh, but Madam okay. Chair, we have maintained site control on Newberry Street as well. I'm sorry, I missed that. We have maintained site control on Newberry Street as well. Okay. So in the materials, that Newberry Street one is what is referred to when it says uh, Boston retail location pending transfer. Is that right? Transfer of ownership interest? Yeah. So we have, um, we did a reorg at our company level, uh, at the Amber Gardens level. And so that's something in terms of housekeeping that we still need to run before you. Um, it's you know, the paperwork hasn't been finalized yet, but basically I just want it to be completely transparent on that document. It'll just be a change of ownership from one Ember Gardens parent equity to another um, with, with um, basically all the same owners. So it's something that will kick off here um, early this year, but the paperwork hasn't been finalized to officially kick off that process, but I wanted to be transparent before. Okay, so... Just because, just so I can understand that a little better, the Ember Gardens um, application that was before us on Newbury Street that we approved and that got rejected at the ZBA, you guys are in the process of appealing it. Correct. And but you're also at that for that application in the process of transferring ownership interest from one equity entity to another equity. Yeah, so it's the non-equity portion. Um, it's the Ember Gardens. Basically, we changed from a corporation to an LLC. Okay. And so it's just a different legal entity, but the, the the same group of owners as before. It's 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 more of a administrative thing on our back end, but it still will require going before uh, your board for approval. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Um, I don't have any other questions. Thank you, Commissioner Holmes. Do you have any questions? I do. Um, as far the the way on your. Uh, your your schematic here as to the building and you say all these deliveries and pickups are going to be away from the public doesn't kind of look like you can do that in this area because the way you showed us that picture next to the bridge all four sides of your building with the exception of the one that's facing the water are open to the public so what is to the left of you? What is to either side of this building and how are you going to isolate your trucks and your deliver, you know, stuff coming in and loading because it looks like it's all empty. It's not like, it didn't look like you had like an alleyway or an alcove or something. So how would you facilitate that? So there is a garage door in the building and that's, you know, where the product will come in and out. Um, okay. And, you know, okay. So there's, there's also been a portion that the trucks or vans or vehicles won't be able to completely fit in, but okay. we do plan on putting sort of this, uh, you know, uh, what we call it canopy overhang. Yeah. Like an awning or something. Yeah. yeah. Over that. And then that itself would have another sort of entrance. And okay. so we, we then would be fully compliant and keeping, you know, all this activity out of public view. Okay, gotcha. I couldn't see that there was a driveway that they could back in, so I get it. They can back the truck halfway in, and what's going on in the building can't be seen out front. Got it. Yeah, yeah. there's yeah, there's going to be a mobile dock. It's something that we use at our other locations for other okay. delivery services. It's called a mobile dock. You can back up into it. It's 100% secured and attached to the building. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. That's it, Jasmine. Commissioner Lombos? Hi, sorry. Um, thanks so much for the presentation. I had a question for Joe, I think, who it seems like has um, experience in logistics and just wondered um, in terms of, I don't know if you have your own company now, it seems like, and I know that it looks like you were a brickie in Boston too, so that's great. Um, what's the, I'm just curious about uh, what's the makeup of your current uh, workforce, like how have you also, you have these great diversity goals, um, how, what your current workforce looks like, um, what the demographics are, 
uh, challenges around recruitment. It sounds like you want to have at least two people with Corey's. I just love to hear a little bit of flavor on your own business right now and how that um, uh, translates to this new business you're thinking about. Absolutely. Uh, and so to answer the first part of the question there, uh, yes, we do currently have our own business. We've been operational for approximately three years. We do have about 50 full-time employees that work with us today. Of that, I would say, and I could get back with some exact numbers, uh, I do know that over 50% uh, are from minority communities. And we, I would have to get an exact number for you, uh, but I want to say probably close to 50% of them were also Boston residents as well. Um, so we actually do, uh, when it comes to our work staff currently, we do have quite a diverse work staff. Oh, in regards to the quarries, sure. We're actually, uh, we're working, and I know the chain was working with a couple of nonprofit organizations as well uh, that can introduce us to individuals that we could uh, hire and work for with as well. For oh, for urban currently? Yeah. Uh, in regards to our background checks when it comes to urban cargo, uh, we work with contractors like Amazon and FedEx. And so uh, we not are, we have to meet certain criteria before we can onboard specific, uh, essentially you can't have anything on the background. Right. And I'm, a, you know, I'm not the biggest fan of the way that Amazon treats their workers in general. So I'm just wanting to get a flavor of how you, um, who owns a business that, um, you know, is that last mile logistics, I'm assuming you have much higher working standards. It sounds like from your goals here in the, um, in the presentation that it sounds like there's labor peace, there's higher wages, benefits. So I'm appreciative of that. Uh, just wanted to make sure that uh, the your practices are not Amazon's practices. No, ab absolutely. And I always say that we are not Amazon. We're simply a subcontractor. And so all we do is we have a contract with Amazon. Amazon pays us to deliver their packages. Uh, but we are not, you know, we don't employ people through Amazon or anything like that. And so when it comes to those higher standards for our labor practices, obviously that's something that is very important to myself personally. Um, and so that is something that we always try to strive to beat that minimum when it comes to uh, a recruitment perspective. You know, generally speaking in the market, we see anywhere from like 1950 to 1977 when it comes to your average wage for delivery drivers in this area. Uh, we pay 2150 to start uh, and 2250 is our average wage for our drivers at this moment. So we always try and beat that uh, uh, mark. We also, you know, not a lot of delivery operators with Amazon do it. Uh, but we also offer health benefits for our full-time employees. We offer a 401k plan with a match and actually starting in March, we're gonna be rolling out a tuition reimbursement program as well. Great, thank you. And I'm assuming you'll allow for bathroom breaks. Oh, yes, of course, of course. Thank you. <laughs> no more questions, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Wills. Commissioner Smith. Thanks, Jasmine. Um, <clears throat> on your positive impact plan, um, can you just flesh it out? So who is it geared for? I see it's one, internship full-time, one internship part-time, and then you talk about each intern will get up to $3,000 towards a cannabis-related course. Are there a lot of cannabis-related courses? Uh, it doesn't have to be cannabis. It could be okay. a cannabis-related course or just sort of your business course. If you want to take, you know, business management 101 or, or something that uh, any sort of entrepreneur would, would use, you know, as sort of getting uh, the experience they need to get into business for themselves. Um, you know, there's not going to, it's not going to be sort of pigeonholed into any sort of certain criteria, but there is more, more courses out there now, and it doesn't have to be in the classroom. It could be a seminar, you know, there's, there's different things, you know, where that money can go. We just want to make sure that we sort of give the, you know, the classroom and in, you know, in the job workplace experience to sort of give someone a well-rounded resume to get into the industry. Okay. And you're working with people who are impacted on the war on drugs and how are you reaching out to them? So we're working with this organization, uh, CCOE. Um, we are for all of our locations. They're a nonprofit here um, in Massachusetts. Um, you know, they, uh, the, the chair and president, uh, Marion McNabb, she's actually on the, works with the CCC directly as well on this. And so they're working with us, but also numerous other companies, not just Denver Gardens, on kind of uh, procuring this pipeline uh, of interns to get into the industry. So they'll be our primary uh, method of reach out to try to find people. Um, they already have plenty. They've already gotten interns to different companies um, so far in Massachusetts. 
And so, you know, we're partnering them for that, uh, that their organization would sort of handle the, the piece of identifying those who would, would want to take this internship opportunity. Um, but besides just them as well, you know, we'd also sort of advertise this on the more traditional, um, you know, recruitment avenues, you know, uh, you know, yeah, um, you know, like if we did for any other employee, but primarily uh, CCOE will be handling sort of the, the, the pipeline of interns um, for this location and, and our other locations across the state. And geared primarily to Boston residents, right? Yes, yeah. Um, it, 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 we, we, we do want only those that are from the, the areas of disproportionate impact. And so, you know, not just Boston residents, but those that are in, you know, those CCC defined areas that is, you know, the, that have been hit the hardest by the war on drugs. And so it'll be, you know, not just Boston, but those specific areas. And you know, like we have for our other locations, we want to try to make those interns as local as we possibly can. Okay. Last question on that. Um, can you talk to me a little bit about your diversity of vendors? Yeah. So at this point, we're, we're still a little bit away from picking out vendors, um, but there, there will be need for obviously construction, um, outfitting the vehicles. Um, and then, you know, the, this actually supply of cannabis itself. Um, as Ember Gardens is a social equity company, we, we've always kind of parroted that we want to work with primarily social equity companies in terms of stocking our products. Um, and then from the construction standpoint, our partner Tiago, um, he, he, his, um, he has a network um, on the construction side that are from the area um, that are um, racial minorities and immigrants. And the, the, the plan is to use uh, the firms that he knows for our construction. Um, and in terms of, you know, uh, kind of documenting all of that for the board, uh, we're more than happy to do so once we kind of get to that point of, of hiring these vendors. Fantastic. Thank you so much. No problem. Thank you, Jasmine. Thank you. Any additional questions from the board members? Seeing none. Oh, okay. Commissioner Holmes. Yeah, Commissioner Smith just gave me an idea. So your delivery, you're so close to like Chelsea and the North Shore. Will you also be servicing those areas as well? Yes, yeah, it'll, it'll be Boston primarily, but some of the other surrounding municipalities like like Chelsea would definitely be in our, in our scope of service. Um, with these delivery licenses, there's a point where you get diminishing returns the farther you go from the warehouse. And so it will really just be concentrated on Boston and some of these other surrounding communities. Again, we have to go to communities that allow retail sales, you know, not go to federal housing, uh, schools and the such uh, universities. So um, following all those rules, you know, it will be some of these other neighboring municipalities as well. But with just three trucks, we're not like be going to go into Salem or anything like that. It'll sort of be concentrated in, in the Boston and, and like, like you said, like kind of Chelsea area. Oh, okay, thank you. I'm, I don't know what we got to look up for that because you're going into other jurisdictions. We might have to do some background as to what our liability is on that end, but thank you for that. Yep, no worries. Any other additional questions from the board members? Seeing none, we're going to move to public testimony, beginning with elected officials or their representatives. Good afternoon, Madam Chair and members of the board. Natalia Benitez with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. ONS hosted an abutters meeting for this proposal in November 22 of 2022. Only one abutter joined the meeting, but no concerns were expressed and no questions were asked during the meeting. The applicant also reached out to Eagle Hill Civic Association to inform them about the abutters meeting and to explain the proposal. No concerns were shared from the Civic Association as well. At this time, our office would like to defer judgment to the board. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Uh, any other elected officials or representatives that would like to speak? Yes, good afternoon, Madam Chair and members of the board. Ellie Sanchez, Chief of Staff to Councilor Coletta. The Councilor would like to go on record with support for Amber Gardens. Thank you. Thank you. Any other elected officials? representatives seeing none next we're going to move to those who signed up um via the link that was put in the chat allison's going to go through those names so we we don't have anyone who signed up uh to speak 
on this application um, that I can see. Perfect. So we'll move right along. Is there anyone else that would like to speak in regards to this proposal? You can raise your hand. All right. <laughs> Going once, going twice. All right, thank you so much. We'll take this, the board will take this matter under advisement. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Right. The next, mm -hmm. moving on to our next item, the applicant is the Copley Connection Inc., DBA, the Copley Connection. The proposed license permit is 551 Boylston Street, Back Bay. The proposed hours of operation are 9 a.m. to 11 p.m., seven days a week. This is a non-equity applicant. The initial application, one second. Can everyone make sure they're muted? The way you are unmuted, can you mute yourself? Okay, I'll start again. The applicant is the Copley Connection Inc., the DBA is the Copley Connection. The proposed license premise is 551 Williston Street, Back Bay. The license type is a recreational cannabis dispensary license. The proposed hours of operation are 9 a.m. to 11 p.m., seven days a week. This is a non-equity applicant. The initial application was filed September 27, 2022. The filing with Inspectional Services was October 11, 2022. And the date of the community meeting was December 14, 2022. There is a buffer zone conflict. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Jasmine, hi, uh, Josh Zake. I'm here along with my partner, uh, Senem Kamahia and Victor Chang. Uh, Victor, I think is gonna share the screen for our presentation, if that's all right. Perfect. Thank you. you. 10 minutes to present, sorry. Thank you. All right. Now, good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is Josh Zakem. I'm here uh, with my co-founder of the Copley Connection, Senem Kamahia. We are a 100% locally owned, uh, majority minority owned firm. Uh, we have our team here with us, as I mentioned earlier, Victor Chang, uh, who is working with us and is uh, experienced in the cannabis industry, uh, as well as Smart Security, uh, which you'll hear a little bit more about later. Uh, it's been founded by former members of the Boston Police Department. All of our team has a long history of working, serving, and living in the city of Boston. To tell a little bit more about myself, I'm a former Boston City Councilor. Uh, amongst other neighborhoods, I represented the area where this location is and where I currently live, uh, about a block away from the site, uh, along with my wife, Grace, uh, and two small children. Uh, we are actually within eyesight uh, of this location. My partner, uh, Senem Kamahia, is a first-generation American, uh, born and raised in Boston. Uh, he's also had extensive involvement in the city, uh, community organizations. He's a former chairman of the Boston Renaissance School, a uh, board member of the YMCA on Huntington Avenue, Artist for Humanity. He's currently a trustee at the Boys and Girls Club of Dorchester, previously also a resident uh, of Back Bay for a long time. Currently, Senem lives in Dorchester with his wife uh, and two young sons. Our security team, who uh, may be familiar uh, to some of you, uh, Smart Security, uh, founded by uh, Jerry Smart and Joe Harris, who are also here on the call. They have combined about 70 years of service in the Boston Police Department. It's a local uh, minority-owned business enterprise that we'll be working with on security staffing and strategy at this location. And Victor Chang, uh, who's also uh, part of our team, uh, has is very familiar and active in the cannabis industry. He has two open stores currently in Newton and Natick and is very familiar with CCC regulations as well as what it takes uh, from an operational standpoint to get these um, establishments up and running. Thanks, Josh. Uh, our site is located at 551 Boylston, where Wendy's restaurant was formerly located. It's about 6,400 square feet across three floors. It's in a high traffic retail area with great foot traffic and public accessibility. We've listened to community feedback regarding frosted windows or dark storefronts. To that end, we've engaged Artists for Humanity's co-founder, Jason Talbot, to create artwork that will beautify the storefront and activate the exterior. We respect and value the opinion of the neighbors and seek to be a positive neighbor in any way we can. There is one dispensary within the half mile buffer zone, but Copley Connection would be the only majority minority locally owned dispensary within the area. Again, with location in the heart of the Back Bay, we believe that our proposed site is a strong location. As you can see, 551 Boylston Street is serviced very well by public transit. 
there are four train stops, 34 bus stops, 17 blue bike stations. And while we don't expect many customers to arrive by car, there are 38 paid parking lots in the area. As a resident of this neighborhood myself, uh, it's incredibly important to me uh, that we don't have any negative impacts on the surrounding area. To that end, uh, our team has made commitments not to sell any individual pre-rolls at this location. Our trash will all be disposed of in a locked dumpster in the rear alleyway. Uh, we will not have deliveries on Boylston Street. We've heard concerns, and quite frankly, I've experienced myself uh, traffic issues at that location. So deliveries will be in the alley. Um, we will not allow any uh, double parking of customers. We have a security agent posted at the front door who will prohibit entry to folks who are double parking. Uh, we also have entry uh, space in our foyer uh, to allow uh, queuing in the event that that happens. And there's a large area in front uh, of the store that's not on the public sidewalk uh, where we could do queuing if necessary. In terms of having a positive impact on the community, um, we are, as I've said, and Senum said, this is incredibly important to us. Uh, we look forward to working uh, with the stakeholders, the Boston Parks Department and others around Copley Square Park to uh, contribute to maintenance, uh, security, and of course, capital improvements where necessary to this park. To that end, we've made significant financial commitments of $25,000 in our first year of operation, ramping up to $100,000 annually uh, to support activities in this park. Uh, we've arrived at that, uh, that agreement in consultation with stakeholders, with City Council, our District City Council, Kenzie Bach, uh, and others, and want to make sure this is very, uh, this is an important area for us. Cleanliness and access of the location, obviously, as you've heard, and as you all know, Boylston Street is a very busy retail corridor. Uh, it's part of our regular operations. We will have staff monitoring and cleaning up public spaces in front of and around our location, and we do plan to work with the Public Works Department to install and maintain an additional trash receptacle. As far as transportation goes, uh, we're uniquely well served by public transit and cycling infrastructure. We'll encourage all guests and employees to walk, bike, or take transit to the location. Copley Connection will also provide a transit subsidy as well as complimentary Blue Bikes memberships to all employees. As I mentioned earlier, our outdoor security staff will not permit any customers to double park on Boylston Street and then enter the location. Public safety, uh, obviously, we'll have 24-7 high-resolution security cameras monitoring this area. We have outdoor security um, that will maintain uh, maintain a presence there at all times and not allow any loitering or public consumption. We're really proud of the strong community support we've received for this application. Uh, there's over 330 uh, total individual supporters who have either sent letters uh, or signed petition. The vast majority, as you can see here, are in the city of Boston and many of them in Back Bay, including the area directly around this location. We're also really proud of the support of the Back Bay Association, uh, Central Synagogue Boston, the Jewish Health Organization, and many of our local elected officials. Our district city councilor, Kenzie Bach, uh, has submitted a letter of non-opposition. State Representative Jay Livingstone, who's also a resident of Back Bay, has uh, sent us a strong letter of support, as well as our district state senator, Lydia Edwards. Uh, other elected officials who are supporting us are listed here at large city councilors, state senators, and state representatives. At Copley Connection, diversity and inclusion is very important to us. We strongly believe that our employees and leadership need to reflect the diversity of our great city. We're committed to, <clears throat> excuse me, we're committed to an inclusive workforce that represents multiple backgrounds, walks of life, and neighborhoods of Boston. We are quarry friendly. We're committed to paying a starting wage of $18 an hour in benefits, supporting workers' rights, and remaining neutral regarding any organizing efforts. Our hiring goals at a minimum are, as you'll see listed, 75% Boston residents, 50% minorities, 50% women, 10% LGBTQ+, 10% veterans, and 5% individuals with disabilities. Again, these are just goals. We plan to exceed them. We, we believe that a copy connection, this is an opportunity not just for a job, but for a career. We'll work with Mass Hire, Boston Career Center, and Cultivated to leverage their networks and ensure that we recruit, hire, and retain a diverse workforce. Safety and security are absolutely critical as well. As Josh mentioned, we are engaging smart security. Jerry Smart and Joe Harris have decades of experience as former Boston police enforcement. We'll have active on-site security. We plan to have 24 seven camera security. Staff will both visually and technologically check IDs to make sure that customers are of age. Our deliveries, which will be in the back alley so as to avoid any congestion on Boylston, will be randomized and secured by a third-party security vendor. Our personnel will also perform routine perimeter checks to make sure that there is no loitering, consumption, or otherwise adverse behavior in the vicinity of our location. 
why us? Why Copley Connection? We're a locally owned minority, majority minority company that has a history of working with and giving back to the city. Our proposed location is a, a very well trafficked, publicly accessible location in the heart of a significant retail area. We truly have a vested interest in being a good neighbor, partner, and look forward to working with all parties to make Copley Connection a success. Thank you for your time. We would welcome for you, well, we welcome your support and at this time open up for any questions. Thank you. Thank you. We will move to questions and comments from the board members, beginning with Chairwoman Joyce. Uh, thanks, Jasmine. Um, I like your application. I share the concerns um, that you kind of identified in your presentation about the congestion in this neighborhood. Um, and thank you for raising that issue. Um, <clears throat> so to be clear, you're gonna have all delivery of product in the back alley, is that correct? That's correct. Okay, um, do you plan on having delivery here in the future? That is not, not what we're contemplating, no. Okay, because um, that's one of the concerns with some of the other places in that neighborhood, just the double, triple parked cars running in and out engines idling, um, you know, the best of intentions with these business plans sometimes, um, you know, don't work out because just the way people do business now with these third party um, deliveries. That, um, that's not part of our plan, Madam Chair. We think that there's more than sufficient uh, foot traffic uh, there to sustain us. Okay, okay. <laughs> excuse me. Um, <laughs> I wanna, um, I wanna, turn it over to the other commissioners to ask some questions, but uh, reserve my right to follow up before we move on to the public. <coughs> That's okay. Yep. Commissioner Holmes. Um, just one quick one. I didn't see in your hiring plan, I know I'm stepping in um, Commissioner Lombos's area of expertise here, but I didn't see any um, mention of Corey hires or working with uh, people with Corey's. And so what is, what is your plan with that? We we actually do want to work with Corey Hires. Uh, I mentioned it; it may not have been listed on the actual uh, presentation, but we are welcoming Corey uh, yeah. backgrounds and Corey Hires. Okay, and, and we'll do outreach to some of those organizations that sent a mention to make sure we're effective in that. I heard the yeah, I heard the the organizations, but I didn't see it. You're right; I heard you mention some of the organizations, but I didn't quite see it spelled out. So that's why I asked. But thank Understood. you for that. I, I guess I can, um, um, I don't re really have, um, deliveries are in the rear. How many on-site security agents do you plan on utilizing? I think we're gonna certainly work with uh, with our team, Smart Security, you know, Joe Harris and Jerry Smart to determine what, what, we, what would make it the safest. You know, at a minimum, uh, I think we're thinking of three at all times. We have two floors uh, and plus one individual on the outside to, again, monitor that there's no double parking to address both community concerns and what the ch Madam Chair uh, mentioned earlier. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. That's it, Jasmine. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Lombos? Thanks, Jasmine. And Commissioner Holmes, never, ever are you stepping on my toes. I mm -hmm. love that you asked those questions. Um, so I do have one question. It's, it's a, it's a good application and I'm conscious of the buffer zone, uh, situation. And, um, I have read the summary from our staff and I just want to hear again from both of you, what makes this an exceptional application? Um, because that's what, uh, we have been coming up against in the uh, zoning board. And as you know, we don't have control over what the zoning board does. So I want to be able to have our board be very confident about this being an exceptional application. So I just want to hear from you two just one more Thank time. You. It'd be great. Thanks. Thank you, Commissioner. Senator, if, if I can go first. Please. Um, so there's, there's a few things, uh, quite frankly, I think can make this exceptional. One is the location uh, just on its own. The back bay before the pandemic, uh, slowed down a little bit during the pandemic, but as the Boston Globe reported a week or two ago, uh, currently it is exceeding foot traffic and retail activity since pre-pandemic times. If that might be a little convoluted phrasing, but it is doing better than ever. 
as far as retail, as far as activity goes, we think there's a huge demand for it. This location itself uh, is currently vacant. Uh, it used to be a fast food restaurant, which, well, I've lived in this neighborhood for nearly 15 years, um, and I'm certainly not... Uh, I've been known to indulge in some Wendy's. Uh, it was not a benefit to the neighborhood when that location was there. Um, and it's since been vacant. So we'll be activating that. We'll be creating employment opportunities for residents of the city of Boston, uh, good employment opportunities, uh, beautifying that area. Again, I, I walk by it almost every day. My wife and two small children walk by a couple times a day. Uh, it could use some activation right there. Um, and an organization like ours that will commit to cleaning it up both you know, with our staff time, volunteer hours, as well as financially uh, to the area. And I think that's why we've had so much support uh, from residents, uh, from elected officials and organizations, the Back Bay Association in particular, um, you know, which is committed to really improving this area uh, across the board, uh, has come out in support of us. And it's just, it's, it is a highly, it is a dense, highly populated area that we think can sustain this. Uh, and that is quite unique uh, in those ways. I hope that, hope that helps, Commissioner. Great. Anybody want to add? And if not, that's fine. But thank you for indulging. It is really important. We're very conscious about that on the board. So on the buffer zone issue. Thanks. Commissioner Smith. Thanks, Jasmine. Um, on this exceptionality of that area, there's also uh, cannabis um, on Newberry Street, right? Yes. Okay. So you think you're exceptional there too? So they are beyond our buffer zone. Um, yeah, I, I recognize that. Yeah. But they're also minority, if I remember correctly. Yes. And, um, so I guess, you know, the, that area is very competitive in terms of, you know, foot traffic and folks visibility and all that. So, you know, when Commissioner Lombers was talking about, you know, what what's the big difference in a sense between all of that? How are you different from that? Um, you know, quite, so I will say uh, they have a great location. Uh, I was in there just a couple days ago. Um, as like I said, I live nearby. Um, listen, there are in, in Back Bay, I think we have, you know, we have two little lemon stores. We have the big Nike store. We have dozens of bars and restaurants that I can't say. I don't know the, the sales stats for everyone, but it seems to be thriving. Um, and I think we want to contribute to that. Um, you know, I think the cannabis industry as you all know better than anyone, is certainly maturing in the city of Boston. Um, and I recognize the buffer zone. And, you know, I'm not out of line saying I was, when I was on the city council, uh, we did debate it. I was a co-sponsor uh, of it. And I think the intent of that was to make sure that if there are negative impacts, they're not clustered together. Um, and one, I think the distance is, you know, 0.4 miles from the closest one is important. But of all the neighborhoods in the city of Boston that can sustain uh, multiple locations, I, I think this is one. And I would venture that I'm one of the only applicants uh, who lives within eyesight uh, of the location to keep an eye on things. Um, and I think that's something that's really important and that, you know, we're committed to as, as members of this community. Thank you. Um, how many people are you projected to hire? And the, the salaries. Sure. Um, I know, Victor, if you want to touch on that, I know we at a minimum, it'll be uh, $18 an hour starting, but we do plan to evaluate and the average, I think, should certainly be higher than that. Yeah. Right. I mean, so in terms of total hires, I would anticipate a site like this having upwards of 30 of employees, not including the security staff. Um, you know, starting pay is $18. Generally, um, the way I would recommend operating it is that's a probationary, you know, first 90 days, uh, at which point then employees are assessed for a raise. Uh, and so generally you'll see employees move from 19 to 20 to $22 relatively quickly. Uh, in addition to the salary, there is um, upwards of four weeks of paid time off between vacation, sick, and personal time. There is full benefits, dental, uh, 401k with a 3% match. Um, and then also with uh, healthcare, you know, we're uh, in talks about adding in uh, mental health uh, services as well for employees. Uh, so I think there's a, a, a pretty generous competitive uh, compensation package. The other thing I just to answer your uh, add to the previous question. Um, I do think the on the buffer zone, there's also nothing proposed between this site moving east towards downtown until I think you hit, hit the mail, uh, Milk Street dispensary. So there's a large portion of the city that is, um, you know, there's really isn't another dispensary for uh, residents to to visit. Thank you. 
Uh, last question. No individual pre-rolls forever, ever, forever. <laughs> forever. I, that, that's our intention, Commissioner. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Jasmine. Thank you. Thank you. Any additional questions from the commissioners? All right, seeing none, we will move to public testimony beginning with elected officials or their representatives. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. This is Maggie Van Scoy from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. At this time, our office would like to defer to the judgment of the board. We held a public meeting on December 14th. The meeting was short, but a variety of opinions were expressed. Some folks thought that this was a good opportunity for the Back Bay and others voiced concerns about oversaturation of the area and public consumption of cannabis. Our office received scores of form support letters from residents living in Back Bay, across Boston, and around Massachusetts. I'll also note that our office saw letters of support from elected officials, including State Senator Lydia Edwards, State Representatives China Tyler, John Santiago, and Jay Livingstone, and City Councilors at Large Julia Mejia and Rusi Luijen. We saw a letter of support from the Back Bay Association as well. Prior to the public meeting, this applicant met with the Neighborhood Association of Back Bay, who wrote a letter of opposition citing concerns over proximity to the Snowden School, proximity to Copley Square, and they feel that this would add an unattractive storefront to this block that's already struggled with that. We also received a letter from Councillor Kenzie Bach, who's in non-opposition. Again, we would like to defer judgment to the board at this time. Thank you, Maggie. And I see State Rep Livingstone has his hand raised. Uh, yes, and um, I'm here, as I wrote in my letter, to uh, testify in favor of this project. I think um, it is a location, uh, as the applicant said, that it is a high traffic location. It is a far enough distance from the other dispensaries that I think it will be uh, a unique market. And the management, in particular, of this dispensary, um, who I've known for years, uh, can have been uh, intimately involved in the neighborhood. I think we'll do a great job for the neighborhood. I think it'll be a great ad addition uh, to Back Bay. Um, and I'm not only the state representative for Back Bay, but I'm a resident of Back Bay. And um, so I look forward to, hopefully you'll agree and approve their application. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other state reps or officials? All right, we will now move to those who signed up via the chat. Well, the link in the chat, I should say, Allison's gonna go through those names. Please state your name and address and any affiliation. You will have two minutes, at which time you will be muted. Thank you. Thanks, Jasmine. Is Elliot Laffer available? You signed up online? Yes, uh, this is Elliot Laffer. I'm the uh, chair of the Neighborhood Association of the Back Bay. Um, our, we, we think that this is a really good team. Our concern is with the location, not the people. Uh, the location is in a straight line within 500 feet of the Snowden School. It's also uh, on a direct path, basically, between the two, two locations that Snowden uses, because in addition to their location at Newbury and um, Dartmouth Street, they also uh, uh, use facility in 140 Clarendon Street, the uh, former YWCA building. Uh, it's across the street from Copley Square. We see that as a as a concern. Uh, the park is going to be revitalized, and uh, and we don't think that this is a really good use that close to the park. Um, we are uh, uh, concerned as well um, that that the path uh, that the kids walk between the two locations goes by this this uh, facility. Uh, and we're concerned with the block. This block, which is around the corner from where I live, I walk it every day, um, has struggled as a retail block forever. And, uh, and we're concerned that this won't add to the, uh, the positive retail use on the block. I understand that uh, having a vacant facility doesn't add to it either, but, uh, but we don't think that this is the right way to revitalize the block. And so we would uh, ask you to oppose this uh, we have uh, we we would note that um, we did not oppose either of the two uh, existing um, dispensaries in the Back Bay that are in operation, and uh, and so we try very hard to uh, to not take a um, gee whiz. Let's start with opposition uh, position. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Laffer. Uh, is Marissa Haddad available? 
Hello, uh, my name is Marissa Haddad. I strongly support um, this being proposed given the proximity um, to the T and just convenience for commuters along with the hours of operation. Um, I also live in South Boston, so it's right along the green line um, for me personally. Thank you. Thank you. Is Josh Byron available? Uh, yes, hello. Hi. Sorry about that. That's okay. Can you please state your name and your address too uh, in the record? Of course. Josh Byron, uh, 25 Northern Ave, um, downtown uh, across um, in Fort Point, uh, Boston resident for uh, 12 years, Massachusetts resident my entire life. Um, and I wanted to join to speak in favor of this application um, for a few reasons. I think first and foremost, um, we have applicants who do business the right way. Um, I know personally based on experience, knowing them for a number of years, uh, great respect for them. Um, and I also think that in this climate where um, people are not investing in downtown, a business that is willing to go in, spend money, hire people at 20% above minimum wage, um, that's something that I want to support to try to bring people into Boston, especially given that the Back Bay, uh, the highest percentage of retail establishments, I believe the, the downtown revitalization report said it was 18%, um, and foot traffic everywhere is down. Um, I think that it not only benefits uh, our community, but I think it will benefit every retail business to have um, some to have another location, especially this close to the T. Um, that will bring people into Back Bay and, and traffic other retail establishments. So um, I appreciate your time and um, good luck to the applicants. Um, I hope this gets approved. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And apologies in advance if I mispronounce anyone's name. Um, Natalie Saden, are you available to provide testimony? Yes, hi. Uh, hi. My name is Natalie Sedone. Um, my address is 29 Kittredge Street in Boston, Mass, in Rosendale. Um, I am in support of this location. I think it will be great for the community and for that particular area of Back Bay. I think there's a lot of people that can benefit from the location. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Conrad Armstrong, if you're available, you can proceed. Hi, my name is Conrad. My name is Conrad Armstrong. I live at 439 Marlboro Street. I just want to point out that Ayer, which is just 0.3 miles away on Boylston Street, agreed to close at 8 p.m. due to neighborhood concerns about late night cannabis purchase, usage, and loitering. This application is asking to close at 11 p.m., which is inconsistent and unfair to the existing nearby dispensaries. If copy collection co copy connection is approved, they should close no later than 8. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Um, Adam Gendro, if you're available, you can proceed. Thank you. Uh, my name is Adam, Adam Gendro. I live at 192 Hyde Park Ave on Jamaica Plain. Um, I just wanted to come on and express my support for uh, not only this location, but the operators uh, who I've known for a number of years and uh, they're, they're great folks and uh, great operators. Uh, Victor being a uh, fantastic operator currently in the cannabis industry. Uh, but also uh, to Josh's point, um, I think that uh, that location is uh, in, in dire need of, of reactivation. It's kind of a, an eyesore on the back bay currently. Um, and I think this would be a fantastic application uh, for that location. Um, and like I said, with fantastic operators. So uh, that's all I got. Thank you guys. Okay, thank you, Ryan Silva, if you're available. Yes, thank you. Uh, Ryan Silvey, uh, Boston resident, 26 Bellevue Street, uh, West Roxbury, uh, last five years in Boston, lifelong Massachusetts resident. Um, just wanted to voice my strong support. Uh, I'm very familiar with the operators. I know that they run a top flight um, operation that's incredibly dedicated to compliance and also has I would say significantly above average investment in the employees that work for each establishment um, certainly exceeds 
market averages within the cannabis space. So strongly in support of this. So thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Um, Kendon Carr, you can proceed. Hi, Kendon Carr, um, 412 East A Street in South Boston, uh, lifelong Massachusetts resident. I've uh, been in Boston for 16 years. I uh, just wanted to show my strong support for the applicants. Um, just to echo, I mean, sounds like an echo, the last five people, uh, but I've known them for over a decade. They're very thoughtful and caring uh, about the community. Uh, they put a lot of work into it and I uh, want to see everybody be successful. Uh, also, I've lived, I have lived, I've uh, worked and shopped in the Back Bay for many, many years, and that block does need uh they need more activation than some of the other blocks on the uh, on Boylston Street. Uh, so yeah, just a strong support. Okay, thank you, uh, Jack Screra. You can proceed. Uh, my name is Jax. I've uh, been in the Back Bay for about 10 years. I'm at 381 Commonwealth Ave. Uh, I'm a strong supporter of both the applicants and this project. I do think that, um, you know, we're not talking about the people with chronic pain that live in the back bay that are serviced this side of um, the street. I know personally, I wouldn't go down all that way from my end of um, back bay in the winter. So why would those residents come all the way to Newbury Street in the cold and winter when they're in severe pain? So I think they are servicing a need for people who do um, would not be able to make it all the way up to the top of Newbury or even the middle of Boylston. And um, I do think they're, you know, servicing people who really need it. Um, so I am in strong uh, support of this project and um, I really hope everybody moves it along. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, Reynolds Graves, you can proceed. Hi, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, here to testify in support. Uh, sorry, uh, Reynolds Graves. I live in the Seaport, uh, Boston resident for uh, about twelve years now, um, and testifying in support of this uh, venture here, Cobbly Connection. I've known both the operators for probably over a decade now, both Josh and Senum. Um, they are strong members of the community, whether it was on the city council or on Mayor Walsh's one and three council where I met uh, Senum. Uh, I think they've both got a great initiative here and really want to serve the community. Um, and I'm hopeful that this will get approved um, and, uh, you know, really create jobs and, and move the industry forward. So excited to cast my support for this project. Okay, thank you, Mr. Graves. And with that, that concludes all of those who have signed up. I, to provide testimony. Thank I'm you. sorry, Madam Chair. I, I think at least a couple other folks I see on. Yeah, no, those are just people that signed up the the link we put in the chat. But is is there anyone else that would like to speak on this proposal? I believe there's a mayor that's uh Robert Weintraub. Uh can you hear me? Yes. My name is Robert Weintraub. I live at 776 Boylston Street, right near the location. I'm, I speak uh, in very much in favor of this uh, application. Um, I use uh, marijuana products and our local dispensary, which is nearby, frequently runs out. So um, having an additional dispensary nearby would be very, very helpful. Uh, I've known the operators for uh, a long time um, and uh, can speak very highly of them. I think their names uh, go without, uh, carry a substantial amount of merit. Um, Josh's name is very well known in this area. Um, and, and as a real estate broker, I can speak to the retail diversification uh, to strengthen that part of Boylston Street, which as many people before me have testified, has been an eyesore, has been plagued with uh, businesses going in and out and, um, uh, and this this dispensary will bring stability and diversification to that retail strip, which will be better for everybody. Thank you, Mayor. You would like to speak? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair, uh, Joyce, and uh, the board. Uh, I, I, you know, I'm a resident here in the Back Bay on Beacon Street. I, I live within minutes of a walk to the establishment. Uh, as well as I'm the founding synagogue in Boston. Again, our, our synagogue is just a, down the block from the uh, from the from the site. Uh, the, 
exceptionality uh, was was used by the commissioners earlier. And I say that, you know, I, I got character of, of both um, uh, Josh, who I've known over a decade now, uh, in both of our, uh, in our respective roles, he was the former city councilor of, of our of our district, um, as well as as well as Sinem Kumahia, uh, spectacular people, and uh, to me that's critical uh, because this is coming to the area and has already come to the area. And considering uh, the nature of uh, the ownership, to me that that's what does it, and, and therefore uh, they have my support and. Uh, I, I, I encourage uh, the board and, 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 and the chair to, uh, to vote um, in, in, uh, in support of the, uh, of the establishment. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to speak in regards to this proposal? Seeing no additional requests to speak, the board will take this matter under advisement. Thank you very much. Thank you. So those were all the matters before the board today. The board's voting meeting will take place again next Thursday, February 16th at 1 p.m. The information to access the voting hearing will be on our website, boston.gov backslash cannabis. Again, the record will be kept open until next Wednesday, February 15th at 5 p.m. Thank you all for attending today's hearing and enjoy the rest of your day.